Hey guys, it's Liat and Casey, and we are here with episode 154. Casey, what do you have for us today? I think it's a good one. Courtesy of you. <laughs> That's what Maybe our guests will laugh. Episode 154, don't forget to turn the light off the refrigerator door. This is a good one. <laughs> I learned this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, she doesn't even know that she's singing like a Jewish trope here. <laughs> Am I really? Yeah. <laughs> like, Shadaka, Shadaka, Shadaka. She's obsessed this with this. This is what we do. This is what we give. To money to the poor. Or to help them, them live. live. Okay. All right. Casey is fully immersed. Today's episode 154. If you missed the rhyme, Casey said, don't forget to put off the light in your refrigerator door. Because this is a constant argument that Casey and I have. She is always annoyed when she comes to my house. Well, right now I've been in a rental because I've been fixing stuff at my real house. I've been in an Airbnb. And the fridge light is always off. And she's like, your fridge is broken. And like tries like digging in. I'm just like, just leave it. Like there's tape over it. Yeah. And I'm like, like. Or when I was at your actual house and you had the Shabbat fridge. I would always forget to put it back to Shabbat mode, and then you'd open it. And be yeah, like, people, Casey! <laughs> people have no idea what we're talking about right now, but today's episode is going to be about Shabbat, or the Sabbath. Um, we'll talk about what that is, and why my fridge door, I can't have the light on in my fridge. You're probably wondering what's going on. Uh, we're going to let you know, but before we do that, we have to get to our review of the day, because you know we have to know how amazing we are, so... Take it away, Casey. All right. This is from Miranda Thornley, not Liat. Because last episode, she tricked me and had written one. <laughs> well, best podcast. Love you guys. Hey, Casey and Liat. I absolutely love your podcast. I used your one month cram collective two years ago to pass my BCBA exam and got my BCBA box. Sometimes I feel burnt out with the field, but listening to your podcast brings back my love for ABA. Once I get some more money, I want to take your CEUs. Love you guys. Mean it. We love you. And, and we really it. mean it. And we cannot wait for you to take some CEU. Amazing. But it makes me happy they're still sticking around. They took it two, two years, years ago, ago and passed and they still listen listened to us. Amazing. Wow. Okay. And thanks for leaving it. The effort to leave one is hard. We get it. So thank you. And it's a new one. Red, yeah. Came in 927. So obviously my threats are working. Please go leave us a review. We won't be mad at you. Okay. <laughs> that rhymed. I'm a natural rhymer, honey. Okay, so today's guest um, is someone who Casey's going to give the formal uh, introduction to our guest. But as you know, Casey and I teach the courses to slay the BCBA exam. If you don't know, go check us out on studyingthisaba.com. But one day I'm like, in the, usually I do not run the chat. Like I have to be the one teaching, drawing the notes, or else I'm not focused. So usually if it's like Casey and I both there. She'll be in the chat typing away like she loves like responding to people, hence why she gets back to her email so quick. <laughs> and I like to be the one teaching. But one night, I don't know if someone else was teaching for part of it or something, but I get a message, like a private message in the. Or did I message him? I think I messaged him. Like He had a little kid come up to him or something, and I saw a kippa or a yarmulke that some of you guys know on its kid's head. And I was like, is that a kippa I see? I wrote um, in a private message. So obviously I would, okay. And then he wrote back, Shabbat Shalom, motherfucker. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like I think that was it. Okay. So he said, Shabbat Shalom, motherfucker. And I was like, uh, lol, R-O-F-L. You know, no, I'm kidding. I don't know what he said. But anyway, L-M-A-O. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then we we started. Um, Jewish geography. Adding. Yeah, playing Jewish geography, who you knew. It happens to be that we both were in Israel the same year studying. And not only were we in Israel the same year, as if the country's not small enough, we were, like, in the same, like, tiny city, like, with on the same street of each other. Like, I was, like, essentially, like, the girl version of his school, and he was the boy version of my school. So we were, like, really close and definitely went to Burger's Bar, which was, like, the burger hotspot for um, people to bring their hormones and flirt with each other. And then... <laughs> We've definitely had to have been at the same time. A hundred percent. Now you got to have the background. Casey's going to tell you who our guest is. All right. So I'm going to butcher the last name. 
Michael Lebovitz. Lebovitz. Yeah. Thank you for helping me. He's a trained linguist specializing in Jewish languages. Started his clinical experience as an SLPA. Became a professional. Dem- They're literally embarrassing me. I can't. <laughs> A professional Democratic campaign professional <laughs> as a field organizer for a state Senate campaign. Started business consulting, switched to ABA, worked for PBS for four years. Yes, a- we love you. Got elected as a Democratic <laughs> precinct captain. Captain became a poll worker for elections. Passed my VCBA exam in January using our mock exams and. I don't know why you only wrote that because you were definitely in the collective when you wrote me about Shalom, motherfucker. Started <laughs> learning, act, and then got hired as the resident BCBA for Baycare Behavioral Unit, where he works as a community action team and statewide inpatient psychiatric program. I didn't know that you do that. I'd love to ask you about that. Special, uh, specialized in trauma, trauma, but <laughs> okay, act. Trauma focus act. Are you and- trying to be like me? Yeah, bro. What do you think? <laughs> I know how to read. Okay, so he is also Jewish on top of it, hence the reason that he's coming on for and He's wearing a kippa. And he's wearing a kippa. Perfect. Exactly. So we connected over the fact that we were both Jewish and that we happened to be in the same place at the same time, the same year. Probably having the year of your life. I had the best year of my life. My year spent in Israel learning. That was... Um... And so today's topic... We are talking about, we had talked about doing a podcast and I was like, we need to do a podcast on Shabbat or the Sabbath. The and, ba- behaviors behind Shabbat. And like, what is Shabbat? And like, what is it when I tell everyone that I work with or that like, oh, sorry, just getting back to your message. Oh my God, I'm sorry that I just saw your passing message that you passed. I've been on Shabbat. Like, I realize I write to people as if they understand it, but they have like no idea. And like, they're like, so where is Shabbat? Like, where is that place? Like, oh, it's like, oh, well, it's anywhere actually uh so can you give us an operational definition of what shabbat is michael yeah sure um shabbat is the Wait, same is word it as shabbat, shabbat or shabbat <laughs> right that's all- stimulus equivalent. equivalent stimulus equivalent he's saying shabbat which is like the more yiddish it's the same word in three different languages oh okay so shabbat so is shabbat in- shabbat is like Israeli Hebrew. Uh, Shabbat is closer to Yiddish, and Sabbath would be the English equivalent. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sundays are called Sabbath. Or yeah, then you could also call it the day of rest. Did you want to add more relation? Oh, that's there? a good. So you want to be formal about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. If you want to add in some more stimulus equivalents. So simply put, Shabbat happens every Friday night to Saturday night and it is a day of rest just like Liat said um rest has a very specific definition and there are um you know, stories BCBA, in the Torah Torah BCBAs must have written the Torah because they were so specific in their operational definition of what you can and what you cannot do examples and non-examples it literally <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so it wasn't only in the Torah, but it also got hashed out and, and specified more by generations of rabbis down the line. Um, but in the Torah, the Jews, while they were wandering in the desert, built the uh, tabernacle, which in Hebrew is called the Mishkan. And every action that they did to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, counts as work. And that is how we define work and what we abstain from on Shabbat. Oh my God. I did, I did not, I did not know like the, that the tabernacle part of it. No, I mean, I knew parts of Shabbat, but I didn't realize like that's how they came up with the different. Yeah. The malacha, the, the, all of the things we can't do, the restrictions. So let's tell people some things that we can't do because people are like, okay, so the day of rest and it and it changes the different like as to when it starts and when it finishes throughout the different year because we go by the lunar calendar. So as the sun sets, right? So like it starts a lot later in the summer 
but it also ends really late on Saturday night. So are you more like you like Shabbat better in summer or winter? Ooh. I don't know. That's a tough question. It kind of depends. I, I, do, I enjoy... I enjoy having Saturday nights now because, like, we get to go on date nights and hire a babysitter. But uh, I also think, like, coming in early on Friday, coming home hot from work, like, trying to rush and cram everything in and get dinner ready and everything, that can be a real <laughs> – that can be a real pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just depends. Pressure. So – this, I'm going to give a little bit of a background on further on to Shabbat. So like the actual day itself is like the main things that I'd say like, I mean, some people are stricter than others. Like, you know, like I observe the Sabbath and even like I don't do any of the things we're going to talk about. But um, also like, so it's typically like the, I'd say like the standard that most people know would be like a Friday night dinner. Right. And we have people might know like Casey loves challah bread. Um, that was going to be why I rhymes was. Like I love challah for sure, yeah. But then I was like, four <laughs> times four. She was stressed out, exactly. But I love challah. I mean, I that's all I want to eat. And mm -hmm. once who does it? And then you eat it so my... with the butter, salt, or whatever. And then I'm like, I'm not even hungry. I've just eaten a whole loaf of bread. Yeah, especially if you like get all my like, family the... used to call challah Chris challah because I had a buddy Chris who came over for a Friday night and just like couldn't believe that he had never had this magical loaf of bread before. And he ended up like forcing his family to buy challah every week after that. They're doing that. <laughs> oh my God. It makes the best French toast too. Oh, oh yeah. All right. So like th that, that meal is typically like, that's the one, like the meal that like when you're bringing like the Sabbath in and like, usually you have your family, like, you know, family, friends, it's time to get together. What is it called when you start the prayer? The, the kiddish kiddish is what it's called is like the prayer over the 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 wine and then there's like a whole routine there's a whole chaining procedure going on there like you got to do it in order then you wash your hands like a spiritual washing then you are not speaking until you eat the bread <laughs> not everyone like feels the need to talk more than ever when they're not allowed to and there's a rule not to talk so everyone's like mm -mm 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 -mm, pointing to what they need um also like jewish people have a hard time being quiet so like it's really <laughs> yeah right my, it's like, yeah, it's my wife, my wife exclusively washes after me and my son so that she can keep talking. <laughs> right. So and then like the whole meal and like, it's usually a night's meal. And so people like intentionally are prepping for this meal. Um, definitely on Thursday, some people who are like could prep earlier on the week if they have their shit together. Some are like trying to like get by on a Friday, <laughs> picking up from the kosher grocery store, like pre-made food, whatever it is, what you're doing. But it's a time that I, I, I'd say is also very unique in today's like tech heavy society, because also as we have this meal, we also have one on Saturday morning. Um, like you can't use your phone. You can't use like you can't use electricity, meaning like if the lights are on somewhere or if they're on a timer, it's fine but you can't go and like turn a light on. Hence the reason why I have to keep my light in my fridge taped because if I open the door, it will turn on. Um, and why and there's actually light. a really cool reason for that. Tell us. So we, we mentioned like we get all of these, these restrictions from the Torah, which is clearly not a book written when we had phones. So like why are phones restricted? They, they're not for work. Right, they're they're for fun, air quotes. Because most of us, I think it probably is work, um, colloquially defined anyway. But what it, what happens is as we get new technologies, the rabbis, um, I'm I'm using that as like a very general term, but rabbinic councils, uh, rabbinic authorities, like however you want to call them, they get together and they actually look at how these technologies work and what they are and whether or not they would be um, considered a part of these restrictions that we have. And so phones, because they're electronic, um, count as um, fire. They count as starting a, a flame. 
And there's also mm -hmm. another restriction with phones that... Which also says that you cannot be lighting a candle or anything on Shabbat. Right. But there's like a big question about, you know, when VCRs came out, can we record shows that happen on Friday nights or Saturdays? And it was really interesting because the rabbis had to like come together, figure out how this works, what that would mean. And they discussed and sort of came out and said like, it has to be off, but if it doesn't turn on when it records, then you're fine and you can do it. So like, there's all these deliberations that happen still today about new technologies and things and whether or not we can use them or how to use them on Shabbat. And that's how the fridge light. I guess we should, like you could also like you're allowed to your fridge is obviously keeping things cool all the time, right? Like so you still are allowed to take food out of it. Right. And a lot of fridges nowadays, like we just moved and we have a new <laughs> fridge that connects to the phone which is wild. And yeah. our fridge has a Shabbat mode on it. So we mm -hmm. like on Fridays, we press the Shabbat mode button and the lights turn off and it's totally kosher. So it stays cool, but no lights. So I remember I've learned a lot since knowing Liat about, you know, the different rules, but I remember- You learned a lot since knowing Liat? I guess. This is the best run Casey's ever made in her life. <laughs> but the one thing I did, like, super faux pas, or like, ah, uh, when you were living in the apartment, MMA, MMA, where I live now, um, I was sleeping over your house, and they keep, like, a, a hot plate, like a thing on, and they keep all the meals after Friday night on it. Oh, like, it was like a cholent pot. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where you, like, make, like. No, there was fish, though, in it. There was fish in it or something. And anyways, I, everyone went to bed and I was like, oh my God, like I'm super afraid of fires and like leaving things on. So I was like, I immediately <laughs> shut it off in the morning. It was not fish. Yep. Whatever it was. It had to have been chilling. Chicken or something. Like a, a slow, it was like a, a crop But anyways, pot. I basically like yeah. shut it off thinking that it was what you need to do. And then in the morning you were pissed because the food was now not. Oh, I was pissed. I probably beat the shit out of you. <laughs> I'm like. Wait, I don't get it. Why would you leave? It's like fire hazard. <laughs> right. So there's rules that like it's things that are like beyond. So like, yes, like these things are set up. A lot of people have a meal. That's these like, are all a lot of antecedent interventions though. Oh my God. The antecedent prep for Shabbat is and the wild. Sabbath is like from preparing the meals to lighting the candles, organizing, like cutting your paper towels, like wipe your ass. Yep. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things. Turning your lights on. Yeah. Like, planning with your friend, like your your kid's parent, where you're going to meet the friend for a play date because you can't use the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to make sure like your lights are set on what you want. Uh, you also done that a few times, like left me with like a light on, like left my house and like left my bedroom light on. That's nice too. Um, <laughs> or off in the bathroom, and then you're like, how am I going to see Casey? <laughs> right. So there's there's a lot of different things, and I mean we could list off, uh, but. I mean, but oh, a lot you of can't drive. You cannot drive. That's also igniting a fire, as well. Um, you cannot write. People. So, I actually got a lot of good studying done on Shabbat always because, I mean, can you turn pages? Yeah, you could turn pages, you but you read? cannot write. But I also so like to write. Not notes. considered work. You could read. Okay. You can read. You're not supposed to read like business related things, right? So like. I shouldn't that's, definitely be reading business yeah, financial. Yeah, that's kind of like what they call the spirit of Shabbos. Like if it, and this is really interesting because I I work with ACT, uh, acceptance commitment there. And one of like the six principles of ACT is present moment and being aware of where you are and being engaged in what you're doing. And so much of not only the prep, but also like, the actual things we do on Shabbat have to do with being in the moment and specifically like being joyful on Shabbat and remembering all of the rules of Shabbat. Like uh, remembering Shabbat is one of the, the Ten Commandments. And so like having something in front of you and you're reading for work 
can be problematic. It's not technically working as operationally defined, but it doesn't necessarily go in the spirit of Shabbos if you are sitting at home, your family is now around you, and you're like... Right, like if you're seeing your company, like sales goals are down, it's not like helping you be in that restful right. headspace. Right. I also got a lot of studying done, and I still do get a lot of studying done. Like I, mean, I just hate being able to highlight. Oh, like tab all of that. that. Ah! Hashtag ad. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, I, I mean, it's distraction free learning. <laughs> It's great. Because essentially you're trying to set up like that stimulus control of like, I'm present here now. When you have these other like stimuli in the environment, it right. is definitely. You're, yeah, you're using your nice dishes. You've got a nice tablecloth. You've <laughs> cleaned up most likely, <laughs> hopefully, if you had time. You're dressed nicer than like your usual. So you're always wearing like a black like dress outfit. Well, I just always wear black, but you could, you Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're like you're dressed in like more formal wear. Yeah, um, or like if you if you bought something new, like a nice new shirt, I always try to wear my new clothes on Shabbat before I wear them out somewhere else. And some women will wear wigs or like that's all the time. That's a whole other podcast. They wear that not that, only on Shabbat. Yeah. That's a modesty. That's a modesty thing. thing. But that is true. Casey's only seen my mom. My mom only covers her hair on Shabbat, but. I can play the role. The same, yeah. Yeah. So, so you're right. When okay. to see. All right. You're winning yourself some points after I'll just piss on my carpet. <laughs> uh, okay. So. And even like the daily prayers change on Shabbat. So even, you know, we, we go to the uh, synagogue and we pray three times a day. But then on, <laughs> on Shabbat, there are different prayers. We read the Torah on that day. There's a lot that goes on, just like the ceremony of it, that also has that stimulus control. And um, it's just all of those traditions and all of that behavioral momentum, it allows you a chance to just like let go of, of your daily, I, I don't know what other word, service, like the, your daily worries, your concerns, and you do like now, let me tell you something so i like literally say like i because it's been like in my family you know like i grew up like i can't imagine not having this day because i am so non-stop and like as someone with a chronic illness like i'm like if i did not have this time i would not stop and i will say that it's actually really nice to be around you on shabbat like i'm if you're not sleeping I mean, because you do sleep like all day saturday I mean, like I could never nap. Like, you actually have like conversations that are uninterrupted. You like typically it's like oh phone, 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 or like yeah, exactly. I'm being pulled in a million directions. Yeah, it's like, like your like, prejudice, you. Yeah, like if you want my yeah. attention, hang out with you on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, like I will, you know, like. But I'll tell you what: if we get into motivating operations, the deprivation she has when she comes off Shabbat, you won't hear from her all of saturday night i mean or you will it'll all be via text so instagram reels messages um she is like glued i like i gotta catch up yeah like when you get your phone at the end like think how addicted you are to your phone everyone and that's a lot of self-control to not no and i'm i know that i am like heavily addicted to my phone like both on a business end on a personal end on a like on any given day i have literally a 500 notification in my text like i am horrible about Get it because I just feel like inundated by stuff, so I'll just like leave it. Um, so but it's like, so you're deprived of your phone, you're deprived, you can't have sex on Shabbos. No, you can't have sex on Shabbos. You can't, in fact, Michael, let's talk about yeah, sex that's... on Shabbat. I mean, it's it's um, Shabbat is supposed to be family time, and it's supposed to be a time when you can be intimate and you can. I mean, you're supposed to be joyful. And in Judaism, sex and, and wine and good food, like all of those bodily pleasures are mitzvot. Like you are supposed to be joyful and happy. And um, a lot of people, I think like 
the concept is that the only time that you get to have and like that's not true but it is it is like one of the times that that you can have those well you have to have distractions you could be fully present yeah. with your partner yeah but not if what i've learned yeah, it, it's one of the only times that you can truly be alone with your significant other absolutely talk about me on chavez you could eat meat that was just talking about like when you need a nicer china you're like having a meat meal is nicer than like a you could you could always eat meat but you know, like you're going out to make something nicer than you would typically, right? Because it's a special day. Um, and not only that, like the, the same way that you're more present with like individuals in your life that day, you are at, like the under the belief, like with God as well. Right. And like, yeah. And, and did we say about the idea as to where the Sabbath came from with like, this goes back to like the first Testament as well to, you know, anyone who's not Jewish about the seven days of creation, about... And God rested on the seventh day. Yes. So, like, why don't you rest on the seventh day? I I do. That's the fifth day. Well, we believe it as... No. Oh, you think Friday's the fifth day? Yeah. You're running on, like, a... Monday. Like, a business week? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wait, is it... (laughs) No, we go, like... day one. Yeah, Ah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. She only runs on work. I only run on work. (laughs) Uh, It's actually interesting. Casey, the the names of the days in Hebrew are literally Sunday's Yom Rishon, day one. Oh. And then Monday is Yom Shani, day two. Like, they don't have specific names. They just count up. And then Friday, most people will never call it Yom Shishi. They'll call it Erev Shabbat, the day before Shabbat. Like and everything then, is fucking working up until Shabbat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other interesting part about the meat is that that's largely a cultural thing. So it's not necessarily that we have to have meat, but rather we should have something special. And back when, uh, you know, back when like meat was really hard to come by, you if you got any kind of meat, you tried to preserve it and save it for Shabbat. So there's like a lot of uh, stories in the Talmud of these big rabbis buying fish and like a very specific special kind of fish and then saving that for Shabbos. So really that's just cultural. Like whatever is special, that's what you're making. I've had a lot of um, brisket at your house. Yeah, we pull out all the fancy cards, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you're referring like my alley cook? Well, no, even your sister would be brisket. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's like the rest of the week, you're like just trying to survive. You know, you're like, okay, get this kid some mac and cheese if that's what they want for every meal. Okay, all right, yeah, uh huh. Okay, if you want to have cake for dinner, that's cool, right? But you're like, okay, I'm like, I've made the effort to make this day special. Mm-hmm. Most often on like Thursday, we're we're yeah, doing like shopping on cereal. Thursday. <laughs> like exactly cereal for dinner tonight because we're prepping for Shabbat tomorrow. So I have a little bit more of like a, I think, but you also go to like other people's houses. Well, like your mom's or your sister's or. So, I mean, since being divorced, I like am more the attendee. Um, so you might bring a dip. No, I'll bring dips. Actually, I'm having it in my house this week. Um, matbuka. I haven't had that in a while. Matbuka. No, I mean, I literally like. Yeah, no, Daisy. She knows it all. So, exactly. With that being said, where was I going? I I think we should get into the committed action part of this. Like, you're doing it when I think about, I think about, like, the self So, if I didn't believe in something so much, like, you guys believe in Judaism, and you're committed and you have values, that's why you keep Shabbat. And, like, there's nothing really in my life that I'm, like, that committed to that I would, like, follow that self-control of not using technology or setting up such an intricate behavior chain and behavior momentum and these habits that you guys have. I mean, that I have to say is, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God. Like, if someone were to tell me, like, if I didn't keep this and I didn't have, like, such a strong belief that, like, this is the way, like, this is how the world works because, like, this is, like, what I've learned my entire life and whatever or some people find it later on in life as well like often i mean maybe i do like convert you could you could still do shabbat without converting you could, I mean, you could still leave your phone 
But what I'm saying is like, I would think someone is like ass crazy to be like, I want you to go three hours, Liat, no phone. I'd be like, no shot, right? And I'm literally going 26 hours every Friday to Saturday night. Also when you guys fast, like no water, I literally am mind blown by this. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that, that one's rough. And like as a diabetic, I'm not- I'm wrapping my head around it. I, yeah, that, that's I'm, for the holidays, but yeah, that is, that is true. It's, I mean, Judaism. yeah, I mean, Judaism has a lot of stuff going on yeah. and rules and rule governed behaviors, right? That we follow. Um, but you know, what's really interesting about it, obviously talk about it from a religious perspective and that this has like been d- practiced for so many years is like one of the main, like, like rules that you follow within, like, you know, if you'll talk about a lot of the main things in Judaism, I'd say probably like keeping kosher, the Sabbath, um, you know, that those are like some main ones you hear about, but Something that's interesting is that, like, I, I read something recently. I don't know if it was on LinkedIn. It was like, sign up for this, this um, sabbatical or whatever it was. They were calling it something, and it's like this idea. It's this new principle that this Harvard professor came up with of like taking a day of grounding and whatever it is, <laughs> and being present, and like you could pay to go to this resort that does it. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, what? It's like literally rebranding yeah yeah well Well, that's what i'm gonna do and i think i think the important part about committed action because again this is one of those pieces of act that really has to do with all the other pieces committed action is just our behavior but what makes a committed action valuable is that it leads you towards your values and so judaism the torah um all of the rabbis throughout like all the past generations what they've done is built this incredible value system and really that's what a religion is right it's a value system paired with committed action and for shabbat you know one of one of my favorite one of my favorite definitions of a value um i actually i it didn't make it into the outline but i have it here a value provides larger, later, positive, abstract reinforcement versus, yeah, delayed reinforcement, exactly, versus smaller, sooner, negative, private re- reinforcement. And I mean, do we do we want to get into current events? Because I think, like, it's one of the more beautiful, like, for me anyway, well, let me just say, <laughs> if you want to get into it, we can. I mean, I want to do an entire podcast on it, but I actually think that we could just say, like, there's, like, saddening things we're seeing in the Jewish community, like, now, like, anti-Semitism, and it's a way to get away. I mean, right now, as this podcast being recorded, there is a lot of horrible, horrible things, horrible things happening in the world to a lot of innocent individuals, as well as, you know, seeing a lot of anti-Semitism out there. I, I mean, a lot of different people, not just Jewish people, but a lot of people are affected. And it's like, I can't get off Instagram looking at it. Like I yeah, am like seeing a lot of anti-Semitism, which means like hate toward the Jews. Um, I, I specifically I, had hey, to make a rule, hey. like no visual news for me since this all started. I just, I knew that if I started looking at pictures and videos, I just wasn't going to surface from below it. But like what I what I wanted to say was that when it happened, we were in the middle of a of a holiday and we didn't have our phones. And there are people who came to to services who are you know who who don't hold as as strictly to the laws and they had their phones and so everybody knew what was happening. And my wife and I were having a conversation because we have a lot of family in Israel, we have a lot of friends in Israel, and we were so grateful that there was this there was still this 24 hours that no matter how nervous we were we still weren't completely consumed by it yeah and, well and- there was there was a lot of people because i mean i i i over that uh, it was actually it was over shabbat yeah and so i was with someone who is jewish but not observant yeah 
So like they're following this backwards and forth. And I didn't realize the extent to like, like what terrorism was happening because it was Shabbat. And, and I was not in Dallas at the time. And I was like, I'm talking to this friend and I'm like, I'm wondering like if my parents know yet, because my parents go to an Orthodox synagogue where a lot of people observe the Sabbath. I mean, everyone does what they do in their own house. I don't know, but. Um, I was like, no, there has to be someone there who's like, share, you know, like you're still like, you have like non-Jewish neighbors, other people, you know, who were like, oh my God, did you happen in Israel? This is horrible, you know? And I'm like, I wonder if they know. And like, we're not talking, but I think a lot of people, you know, like, like my ex-husband, I still, I, like his entire family, um, who I'm close to as well as like my family and Israel, like everyone was, I think in a dilemma of like, do I call my family on Shabbat or not? Like it was like a, wow, and that, that took a, a lot of restraint for a lot of people being like, yeah, so you'll want to know like, well, is this considered? Cause obviously in Judaism, I mean, I don't know if it's obviously necessarily, there are different rules that like, if it's life or death, like if you are like, you don't usually drive, but if you need to get to a hospital, you, okay. you go. If it's to save you a life, you do it. If you do anything to save life, In fact, it's, it's a mitzvah, it's a commandment that you break whatever law needs to be broken in order to save that life. And, um, right. Yeah, there is there is a lot going on, and maybe a funnier example of this is um, I'm from Kansas City, and we did not always have a winning sports franchise. And there was a year where it really looked like the Royals were going to uh, win the uh, the World Series. <laughs> like two people in my shul, an Orthodox shul, brought their non-Jewish neighbors or friends with them and they had oh, boy. The open, and they were checking they were checking the score and i swear to you like at one point the rabbi was giving a sermon and like one of these guys stood up and he's like not that anyone asked but the royals are winning <laughs> like, oh that would totally be me oh i mean so you're not allowed to do any of these things and technically you're not supposed to ask someone to do it because then essentially you're doing it right so like you kind of like learn these little hustles along the way of being like, oh, I wish I knew if the, the Royals were winning right now, you know? And then like, <laughs> yeah. if you have like, best friends who's not Jewish, it's amazing. Cause then they like learn practice. But, like initially, like, you know, it'd be like, I'd be like, it's hot as balls in here. And they're like, no, it's not. I'm like, oh my God, it took me so long to realize your like idioms or whatever they are when you'd say those things. I'd be like, I I'm so gullible to it that I wouldn't take it. I'd be like, oh, I don't like, and now I'm like, oh, you want the fan on. Okay. But you can't say it. So you, you have to find functionally it. equivalent. Yeah. Uh, it's like in the same spot, just functionally like mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be cheetah. cheetah. <laughs> you got you to be uh, thoughtful in but those. It, I mean. It, it's, that, it's that thing, though, where just knowing the score in like the middle of the fifth inning really doesn't do you any good, you know? That's a very short, in this context, it's a negative private reinforcement. Like, okay, I know the score. And then like two seconds later, you're wondering what it is again, because it's not a permanent you don't know thing. It yet. And it really doesn't matter all that much. Like if you're not watching the game, you'll find out when it's done, what the score is, you know? Yeah. And staying there in Shabbat, focused on the present moment, living your values, like that is a, a longer, a more positive um it's an outward um, right especially because that's something that the religion itself values right that time yeah like the the, the which is why like where i'm like why individuals are committed enough to do this because it's like okay so right now right we talk about delayed reinforcement and like response you know um cost later on just looking it's like okay so in this moment right now okay I could see this show that is coming out or like I could go to like in high school, the biggest fight would be like, I'm in Texas at public school. Okay. Like football is where it's at. I never went to one football game in high school. Like I'm like, so one week I'd be like, mom, I'm going to the game. They're like, okay, so if you want to go, go, but like stay somewhere else. Cause you're like, we observe Shabbat here, whatever it is. I was like, as much as a rule breaker as I am. So Casey, you're so rule with Shabbat. It's like, I didn't ever end up going. Yeah. I like would like talk about going. But like when you look at like the greater reward later on, it's like like 
I, you're so I, I even made like, every so week like i am and obviously to god but like i'm so busy all week like pulled in a million directions like mm-hmm. like while i have my parents here for example like with me like in this world like i'm spending that with them every week right and that's like not i could go back to that like, family i catch myself sometimes when i'm with my parents or something like during the week i'm not fully listening like i'm literally on my phone mm-hmm. like even when i'm with kobe like on shabbat i am so fully present when i'm playing with him like what i'm talking to him about i'm also like sometimes i see things through his eyes like when we're in my house and like a fire truck is nearby i would never hear it because i'm thinking of so many other things going on he's like fire truck ooh, ambulance like and he runs to the front door right like typically i'm like whatever but like on shabbat i too will hear it like i'm present enough to be like wow yeah let's go look what it is like maybe i'll walk him to the fire station you know like i actually am slowing down enough and as someone who like is on like literal speed like it is something that like i i so see the value of and as a kid it was hard for me because like you're looking at these like reinforcers that are cool to other people you know like when you have to go to prom late and like miss photos like that's not cool Mm -hmm. (laughs) right like Mm -hmm. when like and and certain things i mean you know I I remember like walking in the rain one Shabbat, like I had paid in advance at like a hair place that was kind of nearby. It was pouring rain, but I wanted to get my hair done for homecoming. I'm like, cause like, I'm still like trying to fit in, but also like keep my like Jewish identity. So like literally walking in the pouring rain and getting like a curly updo and it being like (laughs) a wet dog, like (laughs) before I even got back home. (laughs) Like it's like these things that, you don't even think about that. Like, like nothing else in my life am I that committed to. And what's funny is like when you're in, I, I myself became religious later in life. And like when you have stories like that, it becomes like a badge of honor in the Jewish community. Yeah. Like, you know, like the silly things you did and you still kept Shabbat and, you know, it all went out in the end and all the stuff. It's like a, it, my it, high school it graduation, so I couldn't go to. It was like on a Jewish holiday. So I went out of my way and I wrote like 10, it was downtown at like the Reunion Tower here, which is like the big ball that's in like that spins is the skyline of Dallas. And I'm like, I am going to this. So I write because like I didn't have money to do anything at the time. So I wrote a letter to all these hotels like, my name's Leah. I'm observing the Sabbath. It happens to be a holiday. I really would like to attend my graduation. This is so important to me, blah, blah, blah. blah. Is there any way? Some of them were like, I was like, my parents like don't like don't like they say like it's important whatever. So two of them had like given me like a free night there, these these hotels. No way. Did I end up going? No. No, but I just like was creative and finding out a way to go. Like it was always about like, and like I mean I went to school with a lot of non Jews, so like I like I always was like a little hustling. Like I had like my non Jewish best friends. Like, they had a schedule of when to come visit me on Shabbat. Like, it was like, I yeah. want to know what happened at the game. Like, Jesse, you know, every Saturday at 2, you come over. Okay. <laughs> like, my one friend, like, our biggest running joke, which, by the way, is so not allowed because she's also Jewish. She just, like, wasn't observant. I would, like, think of these arts and crafts. Idea, and she was a year younger than me, so I was, like, kind of cooler. Mm-hmm. My friend Shay. She's like, do you remember that time, Leah? You made me rhinestone your entire doorknob, which is like not an important activity that was needed at any time. <laughs> and she was also Jewish. I made her hot glue gun my entire doorknob with rhinestones in my bedroom. Like it felt important. Like I needed it right then. And she's like, and then you were like, I don't like it. Take it off. Shut up. <laughs> it's like our biggest like joke that we always talk about. Like she thought she was my one friend who was younger. So she thought I was cool. <laughs> And we're still best friends, but these memories. Yeah. And in, in college, I, I lived with a roommate and he and I were the only two Shomer Shabbat Jews. We were the only Jews students who kept Shabbat on campus. And we would throw like absolute ragers on Friday night. And all of our friends would come over and we would have these massive parties. And by the end of, of the couple of years we lived together, all, like the vast majority of them no, I shouldn't say that. Probably half of the party every week was, was Jewish and non-Jewish. Because people would just come from the Chabad house, uh, which is like a, 
just a Jewish synagogue group on on campus, a synagogue on campus. And uh, they would come over to our place after Friday night dinner. And then all of our friends from class and clubs and college would come. And by the end of it, like all of the non-Jews knew that they were the ones who had to go and like turn off the lights and if their they left the on. dirty, like they would do the dishwasher for us or like they knew like oh we can't we can't we can't turn off the light in the bathroom like they're not yeah, allowed like to do like, that yeah oh we used amazing. to like friday nights like legit like what well, we would throw down like our potluck meals like and like drinks and this and that like all your friends jewish non-jewish were there like let me tell you like it was the place to be it yeah. was like like we're and turning they would up put and their like, phones put away you put some music on that'd be cool not that <laughs> <laughs> and see that was that was the funny thing about our parties our parties did not have music there would be times where like someone who would be new they'd like take out their phone and one of my non-jewish friends would be like oh we don't know it's shabbat we can't use <laughs> phones here that's funny. It was, fan- right. it was fantastic. Like, the things I'm saying are not things that you're necessarily supposed to do. You're not like, because like then essentially you're having someone <laughs> to do for you. But, you know. But that's kind of what it is, right? Like there's so that's much of like this that you can, right. I mean, you can take these laws really, really stringently and you can turn them into punishment. It would be very easy. And then there are so many things where like a lot of people today might not be as religious. They might not be as holding in certain things. But there are ways to do the things you do in such a way that you're still honoring the value of Shabbat. And that in and of itself is like a really beautiful thing, you know? Right. Like I was um, just in Vegas this past weekend and as I went for like a show that was on Sunday and like I'm rushing out to go to Vegas, right? Like Sin City, like the most like not Shabbat place ever. And I'm like freezing food from like the store here beforehand so that like I'm not taking liquids on the plane so I'm like taking it so that I could like have frozen food to have when I'm at my hotel there's food <laughs> everywhere available in Vegas every restaurant you could ever want but I'm oh, figuring out I can try to have my Shabbat candles my Abdallah candles to like end Shabbat like all my different stuff so that I could do this so it is like I mean there yeah there's a lot of um prep and commitment to it and um but i like i was excited to do this episode because so many people ask me what i'm doing or where shabbat is or where i'm going i'm like like, they're like don't take it seriously like what do you mean you couldn't respond right yeah yes you could it's a choice but it's so much more than a choice right i mean yeah everything's a choice essentially right and i mean and all your friends i mean i've had every question like you're telling me you cannot get in the Uber that I paid for and I open the door and you literally just stand right. there. And I'm like, no, like I can't. They're like, fine. What if I put like a rope on the back of the car and you wear rollerblades? I'm like, first of all, I don't think I'm that close. <laughs> no. Although that's creative. Yeah. No, there's like, I mean. And also you can't carry. Like, No, but you like, can if you're in the, the specified. That's like the, a whole separate thing. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many yeah. other podcasts. I mean, if we went into ever, there's so many rules. Casey is like, yeah, like they can't have sex during certain times. I'm like, that's also a whole other podcast. Like we are. Oh, she would tell me one night she's like, I can't teach because I have to go get in this bath at this place because <laughs> I finished my period or something. I don't know what. And I'm like, you're a liar. I go send me a picture right now. And she's like, I swear. I'm going to send me a picture. I'm like, this the religion just crazier to me. <laughs> Well, I didn't send her a picture of the mic, I sent her like like a Wikipedia of the laws of yeah yeah. So, That's you're also, a, that, that was also kind of how this podcast came around because I had I had asked Liat because I had zero shame. I was like, all right, everyone has a podcast idea. Here's mine. What do you think? <laughs> I was basically like, any Jewish law, any mitzvah, any commandment in the Torah, like I want to attack it from an ABA perspective. What are your thoughts? And she's like let's do shop it <laughs> yeah i love it i think it is the yeah. most like beautiful thing and it's all it's awesome like i don't think i'd be as successful 
professionally or even scholastically if I didn't have Shabbat. Like just giving Maybe yourself that time it. to just slow down, be with family, I, let I your brain never, relax. Like if, if I, You'd be in you, the hospital like so much. Well, let me tell you one other thing that's interesting. So when I was like in an unhappy time in my life, I'm not going to say any specific times. Every Shabbat or like Jewish holiday when I'd have to stop, I would get so sick and I'd end up in the hospital. And it was stopping because I was stopping and having to deal with like what I was actually going through, like in like a scenario in my life. Like, yeah, it was like I had to sit there present like when I was like, in a relationship I wasn't happy and it's like here I am like here I am here you are I can't go like run off and like go work or do this or do that it's like here I am here we are here and I would end problem. up in the hospital like I because it was like I was finally like listening to my body and and so the times down. when I was like I actually had to face which could be really hard like Shabbat could be really hard when you well you can use so much to avoid everything like you always say to me, like, push on the rug, push on the rug, and you fill it with all these other things. And then if you remove all of that, what's left? Yeah, is, like, you actually have to face whoa. things. And so, like, it is beautiful, but it is something that takes practice because it's hard, like, if you're living something in your life that's not aligned because it's, like, there's literally no running away now. Like, you are in your face. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's no TikTok we... video to watch to avoid. A less, a less like extreme example of that. My son is in first grade. He's six, and we keep Shabbat, but we did not always live close enough to our synagogue that we could walk. We live in Florida, and we live like we used to live three miles away, which is doable, but not in Florida. Like in the summer, it's too much, and so we would stay over every once in a while, maybe once a month. But like as my son started getting older, he knew that all of his buddies lived close to each other and could play and have fun and it got to a point where like shabbat started to be punishing for him because we still kept all the things we still had family time we my wife and i went on our phones and could have quality time with him but it got to a point where like he knew he was missing out on time with his friends and so we moved like the next time our lease came up we got a place closer to our synagogue and our community and now Shabbat is like this joyful thing again, where he gets to go to services and see his friends and have treats from like all the old dudes in synagogue with candy in there. Every synagogue <laughs> in their has pockets. a candy man. It's the environment. It's crazy. Yeah. Every synagogue has, has like a... six. And it's hilarious because they get like upset when the kids go to another guy with candy. They're like, what about my candy? <laughs> I don't understand. I got like, like yeah. organic lollipops. They don't like organic lollipops. Like <laughs> no, everyone like dum dums. It was that's what I got growing up. I think that, the next yeah, episode we dum dum. That is like uh, I still don't get it. Meat, no cheese, dairy, no. Uh, wait, can you eat meat and then cheese? No, can you eat cheese and then meat? Okay, in this, is it K? Is it UK? <laughs> is it K dairy? Is it? Um, they can drive you insane. Know. It can color, drive you it? literally insane. There's so much. And like the further down you go, it only gets worse. <laughs> like I have my, I have my, my rabbi you yeah. can't eat at his, at his mom's house because she doesn't keep a strict enough level of kosher. Yeah. Like it's, no. it's, there's so much to it and it would be very easy for it to become a punishment. But again, it's one of those things where like you have to center yourself on your values you choose the committed actions that lead you towards those values in an in an it's acceptable so way. <laughs> like you're that doesn't high produce you... anxiety or anything like that. And it, it can be a really beautiful thing. Right. It's all about framing. Yeah. How do you frame it? I love that. Well, love with that, podcast. Michael, thank you so much for coming on. Um, yes, hopefully I this, love this. Thank you. We this, finally did it. This helps someone understand what's going on. Again, not every Jewish person observes this. We're talking about this as like two uh, Shabbat observing Jews over here, but I think it's it's cool to talk about. And with that, I just want to say Shabbat Shalom, motherfucker. Shabbat Shalom, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Michael, thank you so much. Michael, and also congrats on passing the BCBA exam. Yeah, it's huge. huge. Awesome. Yeah. And I also just want to say as like a huge fan, thank you guys so much. This is so cool. And like, I, this is just, this is awesome. I, I have a lot of, can I like give a shout out real quick? Yeah. My, my mentor in PBS, who was my supervisor, she was the one who introduced me to you guys. And she and I get along like white on rice. And I was so grateful to her because she got me involved with you guys and I passed the test and she's been so supportive. And like, now I'm doing this. And it's That's so right. cool. So Anna, thank you, thank you. Shout for... out Anna. Anna, go. Thank you for referring us. Number one. And my sister-in-law for getting me into ABA <laughs> in the first place. Lila. Thank you, Lila. <laughs> Lila, Shout out we love you. To Lila. And thank you guys for making a product that's good enough that people are telling their friends about. It's awesome. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. It was nice to meet you. I hope we can connect again. We will. I have so many podcasts to make with you guys. Just let me know. Yeah. Good. All right. <laughs> we have kosher. We have clothing. We, we have mitzvah. Have we have sedaka. We didn't even talk about benching. There's some wrecked. <laughs> I'm just sorry out words right now. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> He's really, <laughs> I mean, also like between Kobe and my nieces, like educating Casey on different things. Like Nicole yesterday was saying, she's like, I don't know, Ellie was here and she was like, that is talking badly about someone. The like, way the, uh, the rules there is about no, there is nothing better than little kids <laughs> using Yiddish words. It's oh yeah, that it's the best. So, yeah, my son I, says schmeckle instead of penis. Schmeckles, <laughs> words for penis. And he's in Taekwondo and I'm the instructor. I'm like one of the co-instructors of his class and they're sparring together. <laughs> and I turn my back on him and his partner for like one second. And all of a sudden I hear a scream and a cry and he, he comes running up to me and he's like, ah, you just kicked me in my penis. And I'd never heard him say penis before because he always <laughs> And I was like, totally, I was like, what? <laughs> so it was incredible. It was so good. I love that. That's good. He could like read the situation. Like it wouldn't be cool to say schmackle right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if that happened on Shabbat, he probably would have said schmackle. <laughs> exactly. That's right. All right, guys, you know where you can find us. You can find us on our website, behaviorbitches.com. You could reach out to us, give us a topic. If you want to be a guest, if you know someone who should be a guest, if you have a topic that you think would be cool, please tell us. You can find us on Instagram at Behavior Bitches Podcast, Facebook at Behavior Bitches Podcast. Go leave us a five star review on the Apple Podcast app. You can listen to us anywhere, but unfortunately, Apple is the only place that lets us see the reinforcement. So that's why I'm going to push you that way, matching law. And that's all we have for you today. So as always, love ya. Mean it.